Hi everyone, welcome to the next installment of Charts in Perspective, where we use charts to dive into the world of economics and financial markets. I'm Jennifer Nash, an economic and market research analyst for Vetify. Today, we are going to look at our monthly update of the Buffett Valuation Indicator, made popular by Warren Buffett, who in 2001 stated that it was probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. It evaluates a country's overall stock market valuation relative to the economy's size. It's calculated by dividing the total value of all publicly traded stocks by the latest quarterly estimate of GDP. The resulting ratio then tells us if the stock market is undervalued or overvalued. For example, if the ratio is high, then it means the stock market is growing a lot faster than the economy, which could be the sign of a market bubble. On the other hand, if the ratio is low, it could indicate potential buying opportunities. The data for the Buffett indicator only goes back as far as the mid 20th century, since quarterly GDP records date back to 1947 and the Fed's balance sheet updates only go back to 1951. So considering this limited time frame, let's examine the basic quarterly ratio. Based on the Q1 GDP advance estimate and April's closing data, the latest Buffett indicator reading is 204.7%, marking the second consecutive quarterly increase and the fifth highest of the series. This chart also highlights interim highs and lows. At the beginning of 2023, we can see that we surpassed the dot-com peak from 2000 and are still above it today. This next chart, this next chart provides a clearer alternative snapshot of the Buffett indicator, but over a shorter time frame. In this version, we use the Wilshire 5000 price index as the numerator in our ratio, rather than the Fed's data used in the previous chart. Using our Wilshire variant, the latest Buffett indicator reading is at 177.7%, an increase from the previous quarter and the sixth highest reading in the series. So how well do our two versions match? As a reminder, the first chart, we use the Fed data as the numerator, and in the second chart, we use the Wilshire 5000. The Wilshire is considered a broader metric of the market compared to the Fed's rather obscure, non-financial corporate business, corporate equities that we used in the first chart. Additionally, it is the more familiar numerator of the two. However, the Fed data does give us a longer time frame to look at since it goes back to 1951, versus the Wilshire Index, which only dates back to 1971. And those early decades when the ratio was substantially lower definitely impacts the long-term trend. For a visual comparison, this chart here is an overlay of the two versions over the same time frame. The one with the Fed numerator, the red series, has a tad more upside volatility, but they're pretty much singing in harmony. Regardless of the version, an evident feature is the upward trend over the decades. Now for a better sense of valuation over time, let's detrend the data by drawing a regression through the series and eliminating that upward trend. So here we've drawn a regression through the series. We can see whether we're above or below the regression and make rough estimates of about how far. But let's take it a step further and add standard deviations to the detrended regression. Now we can tell the exact percentage above or below the regression trend line we are, which then helps tell us if the stock market is undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. The current Buffett indicator value of 204.7% is 52% above the detrended regression, aka 1.6 standard deviations above its historical trend line. Therefore, the market currently falls into overvalued territory. One final comment to close out. While this indicator is a general gauge of market valuation, it is not useful for short-term market timing, as this overlay with the S&P 500 makes clear. That's all for our discussion on the latest update of the Buffett Valuation Indicator. Thanks for tuning in. For more economic and market insights, you can find my content regularly on the Advisor Perspectives website under the AP Charts section.